Hey everyone, so one of the New Year's resolutions was to uh, cook at home more instead of going out. So we're going to do that tonight. Um, I can't promise this is going to be good. I'm a terrible cook. This might end in me ordering a Domino's pizza, but we're going to give it a shot. So let's go. Alright, I guess we could uh, begin with discussing what we are going to try to make tonight. This is a sirloin steak. Uh, it's about... 16 bucks. It's a uh, 1.5 pounds. We got two russet potatoes here um, that we'll probably dice up and do some roasted potatoes in the oven. We're also going to do some Brussels sprouts, probably half of these. And I didn't even like Brussels sprouts until I got married, to be honest with you, and my mother-in-law started making them. Uh, but they're very good. And then I spent way too much money on extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the, bottom look, uh, the bottle looked cool, but this is about 10 bucks. So... Hopefully it lasts me a long time. And then finally we have some Stubbs barbecue spice rub. Never had this before, so I'm gonna give it a shot. And uh, I don't know guys, let's see how we do. So foolish of me. I also got proof, uh, let's see, American Peril Ale. This is the one I got when I first moved in, my first day here. Uh, it was really good, and this is the only second time I've had it since then. So I'm looking forward to this. This will kind of keep us going. When everything else goes really bad, at least we have this. Alright, first up, let's get these uh, potatoes washed off, peeled, and cut into uh, some cubes that we can roast up. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned them uh, both up a little bit there, got rid of any ruts and dark spots, so they look pretty good. We're going to slice them up um, and get them ready for a little hot water bath with some salt before popping them into the oven, and I think we deserve this. So I don't think there's any science to this. I think you just want to really try to keep them the same size so they cook equally. That's about all I know. I don't claim to be a really good chef, um, but that's what we're going to try to do. So, I'll just cube them up the best we can. I'm going to throw them in a hot water bath, hit them with a little olive oil and some salt, and roast them up. Alright, so we're all sliced up here. So like I said, we're going to put them in some extra virgin olive oil and then we're going to hit them with a little salt. I know this is not the fancy smancy salt that you see, but that is what I have. That is what we're going to do. So we're going to take all this good stuff, put it into our mixing bowl. And that's the one thing about moving. You don't know what actually made the trip and what's still in a storage unit. So I'm thankful that I have this thing. There we go. Try to get as many of these little green leaves off. And basically what we're going to want to do is just a nice light coat of this million dollar olive oil. This better be the greatest thing I've ever tasted. And then some salt. And obviously, like you see on Top Chef, they're chopped. So those are really ready to just set aside and put in the oven when it comes up to temperature. And they'll be good just like that. You can do whatever you want, add whatever seasoning you see fit, but this is how I do it. And they're delicious. Once again, I never ate Brussels sprouts until much later in my life. So highly recommend, give them a shot. We're gonna pause for commercial drinking break. Um, but let's see, we're actually waiting for 
uh, the water to boil. Uh, we're going to throw our potatoes in there just to get them softened up and then we're going to toss them around, kind of get those rough edges that you're kind of used to seeing when you eat roasted potatoes, those crispy edges. So that's all we're doing. Boiling them, cooking them slightly, and then popping them in the oven to finish them off. So there's a little salt in here. I heard that it brings the uh, temperature at which water boils higher. I don't know if that's a lie. Again, I'm not a cook. Please feel free to correct me. I just do it because I assume that it uh, makes everything taste better. Like beer. Okay, let's get to the main attraction. So again, this is just a sirloin premium choice steak. It's 1.495 pounds and it costs $14.94. Got it at the local butcher shop. Looks like a pretty good cut of meat. It's not too fatty. Um, let's see if you make sure you can see this. I don't want to get my hands too messed up, but not a lot of fat. We can do a little bit of trimming. I don't know if we would. I think we're just going to do some seasoning, to be honest with you. fat there that maybe we can cut off, but not too bad. All right, so I know a few people that went to culinary school, not many of them, but they always say, use more salt than you think you need. Just makes everything taste better. So we're just gonna lightly dust this side. Flip her over. This is a really nice cut of meat. I'm very, very impressed. Not terribly expensive, to be honest with you. And this is gonna be dinner, lunch, probably dinner again. Okay, so we're good with our salt. Now we're gonna do our, oops, my finger's in the way, uh, Stubbs barbecue. I've never had this before, so Lord knows. I'm gonna give it the old pity pat. No need to wash your hands after this, just live dangerously. Just kidding. Just kidding. I think if you really want to be elegant, you can hit the sides a little bit. I don't care about that that much. Alright. I think we're good. So we actually season our steak a little early, uh, to be honest with you, because the potatoes are going to take about 40 minutes. The Brussels sprouts, probably about 30 minutes. Um, so the steak is supposed to be about room temperature when she goes into the oven. So we are probably going to let her season, marinate a little bit here in this dish, put her in the refrigerator for the next 10 minutes, cool it down a little bit, then pull it out, let it get to room temperature, and then pop it in so we can time everything up right. So as we're waiting for that, guys, I just want to say thank you for watching uh, the first couple videos that I put on here. Um, I really appreciate it. I think we're going to follow the dinner with a little bit of discussion about kind of why I started YouTubing my move to Florida, um, why I think it might be a good idea for you to do it, and really how cheap and economical it is if you just want to kind of document any big events in your life. Just get it on there. Um, on the internet, you can set it to private mode, no one has to see it but you, but it's a great place to kind of store some memories and um, you don't have to keep it on any of your hardware. You can take those phone videos, those computer files, upload them and then delete them and they'll be on there forever and share it with whoever you feel the need to share it with. So um, that's kind of one of the reasons I'm doing this, but we'll talk more about it and a little about the way that I kind of got started and why I think that um, a lot of the people that I meet and talk to would really benefit from, from doing it. So we're going to get back to cooking, but I just wanted to say that and uh, thank you. So, cheers. Alright, looks like our water is just about there. So let's get ready to get our potatoes in. Oh, it's going to be hot. Perfect. 
So we're going to let those go for about 10 minutes, just until they're kind of tender on the inside. You should be able to kind of poke a knife in there relatively easy, but not kind of just break them all apart. So usually about 10 minutes is good. Okay, so the ultimate goal is to get those potatoes uh, with some salt, some olive oil, onto this pan and into the oven, which is currently heating up to about 450 degrees. So once the potato's done, we're going to dump them in this uh, colander, I think, whatever you call it. And these little holes on the bottom, perforated bottom, is going to give it that rough texture when we start kind of getting the water out, jostling them around, having them knock against each other before we put them into the oven. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, simple, very, very simple. All right, I feel pretty good about where our potatoes are. So now we got to get them out of the hot water, a little olive oil, salt, toss them around in a bowl, and then uh, pop them into the oven. So let's go. I typically just put one of the handles on the side of the sink, pour the hot water in, the potatoes come out, and then usually they just fit right in there. Toss them around. We're kind of looking for them all to rub together. Get that rough texture, that's what we want. We lost one. Man down. Some olive oil in here. Grab a little bit of our salt. Not the expensive stuff by any means, but it should make it taste pretty good. And we get, want to give it a nice little toss. Awesome. You can add some oregano. I've done that before. That's really good. All right, so we just want to try to get these relatively evenly spread here on the baking sheet. They are hot, so be warned. They look pretty good, all perfectly coated. So they're ready. Uh, the oven is very close, 10 degrees away, so we might hear it beep here in the background. And then we'll be good to set these in. We're gonna follow that up with, uh, don't forget we still have our Brussels sprouts here. So those are gonna go in a little bit after. We got another baking sheet for those, but the potatoes need to get done first. There she goes. I only have two hands. All right, so I'm gonna give those about 40 minutes. They take a while. You can flip them, put some more salt on there if you want to. They do take a long time, but they're really good um, once they're done. Can't forget about our Brussels sprouts. These are just olive oil and salt. Um, not very many as you can see, but just put them anyway. I mean, some people like to put this side down. Um, I typically do that just to get a little bit more crunch, um, but do it however you want to. If you feel like you need to add more salt at this point or any other ingredient that you may want to do, go ahead and do that. And again, these leaves, I tend to put them in the middle. I don't know why, there's no rhyme or reason to that. And then we're good. We're gonna pop these in in a little bit, let the potatoes get about a 10 minute head start. All right, so we got our Brussels sprouts uh, above our potatoes there. Uh, just don't hit broil, then you'll be fine because you don't wanna burn them, set the place on fire. If you don't know what broil is, trust me, you don't have it on. Either that or you can't read good. But just, um, we're at 450. Probably have about 15 minutes left. Um, we're gonna have to char our steak on a skillet here and then get it into the oven as well. Okay, so we just pulled our potatoes out of the oven. They look pretty good. Uh, they look crispy. You can do them um, a lot longer than I did. This is kind of the way I like them. Just a light brown char on the sides. 
Um, this should be pretty tender in the middle, uh, but feel free to cook them for as long as you want. But we're gonna go ahead, get these in this bowl, hit them with some salt, put a little um, cover on them while we get our steak finished up. But they came out pretty well. All right, so there's our steak. Um, it was in the fridge, as we talked about earlier. We're gonna get a bit, a little bit uh, of time to kind of come to room temperature, uh, which is what you're supposed to do. But in the meantime, we have our skillet over here, a little bit of butter, like you see in the fancy steak restaurants. So we'll get that reduced down. We'll get our steak on here seared, and then we'll pop her into the oven, finish her off. Getting a nice little sear on the bottom. Flip it, put it into the oven. Okay, so there we go. We have our steak resting. We have the uh, Brussels sprouts and the potatoes. We're almost ready to plate.